Texas is good to be here with you. Men, we are losing the fight. We are losing the battle. Right now, we're losing the war to protect our families and to protect our nation. If you just look around and, and, and see what's, what's happening, I mean, little children are, are, are being taught that they can be Whatever sex God wants them to, I mean, uh, not mm, 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 whatever sex they feel like being. Five-year-old, seven-year-old children hardly know how to blow their noses, and they're being taught. Oh, you, you, you're a boy. You can be a girl. You a girl. You can be a boy. Just anything you feel like. Men are marrying men. Women are marrying women. I have some st statistics uh, that I'm going to share with you today uh, that will, will show you the result of our confusion because we're living in a, a time where many people are confused and some people push that confusion upon young people particularly. Incidentally, girls can now become Boy Scouts. They just announced it this week. In every society, the Makoshi people in the Brazilian Amazon forest, people in Africa, people in Europe, people all over the world, in all of these different Societies, men come together and they take boys aside and show those boys how to be men. Talk to them about what it means to be a, mean, a, a man. What, what, you, what are you supposed to do? What are you, what's expected of you? There are very few places left in our country where men can take boys aside not even the Boy Scouts anymore. We have to do something about that. In the midst of all of this confusion, there's just one question. What does God expect of you? In order to answer that question, let's go to the book for just a, just a little bit. Did you notice that God created Adam first? Now, God's filling up his world, and he's creating everything in pairs. He creates the, when he does uh, bovine, he creates the bull and the heifer together. Uh, he creates the goose, the gander and the goose together. Two by two by two by two. But he did something different when it came to humans. At the beginning of Genesis, he creates man in his image. That's the first chapter. He waits until the second chapter to create Eve. Do you ever think about that? Do you ever wonder why he did that? Why did he break the pattern? of two by two by two. He was giving Adam time to learn how to lead. Adam had a special purpose. And so he didn't want to burden Adam with his, his companion <clears throat> way back there at the beginning of Genesis. He wanted Adam to learn how to do things so that when Eve would come, he'd be ready for Eve. Uh, Adam needed to learn how to make a, a house with strong branches. Adam needed to learn how, when he was going to bring a bouquet home, 
it, it should not be poison ivy, it should be roses. <laughs> he had all of those little things to learn. And it, it wasn't that Adam was slow, but Adam was new to all of this world. And that is what you have inherited, the responsibility of leading. How should you treat your spouse, your wife? If you look at Ephesians, Paul wrote, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. That's the first half. A couple of chapters later, he says that you should love your wife as your own body that you should treat her that way. So part of leading is building that family. And when you build that family, you are supposed to lead that family. And you're supposed to love and protect and cherish that wife. Now, what about your children? What does the book say about how are you supposed to relate to your children? It's pretty clear. Let's go back to Ephesians and Paul. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Very few words. Absolute clarity. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That's, there are two parts to that. Children, obey your parents. Parents, in the Lord, you have to be in the Lord. You have to lead them. You have to teach them. You must instruct them in the Lord. You have to be standing on that rock, the rock of the Lord. Now, he sets forth that, 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 that authority, but he comes back and he sets forth the responsibility Again, Paul, again in Ephesians. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Absolute clarity. Love Ephesians. Love Paul. Because he's so clear. So, what is your responsibility? What's your role? You have to lead and protect. We have to instruct and we have to provide. I don't see enough men leading and protecting and providing and instructing. And what's the result of that? Let me give you some, some statistics. I hope you all have napkins on your, on your, your tables, because these statistics will make you want to cry. 1956, Elbert Guillory was <clears throat> about 13 years old. 2016, Elbert Guillory is 73. 60 years difference, so I've lived these years, and I've seen this change from a young man to an old man. Divorce rates in 1956, there were 382,000 divorces. In 2016, 60 years later, more than twice the divorce rate, more than double. 813,862. Divorce has increased, has blossomed. Fewer than 200,000 illegitimate births. Fewer than 200,000 
1956. Last year, 1,600,001,527 illegitimate births. That's somebody do the math from 200,000 to 1,600,000. Eight, I think that's like 800% increase. Something's wrong with that. Yeah. Abortion rate, 1956, 337. Abortion rate, 2016, over a million over a million little American babies killed in the womb. Now, there are a couple of problems with that. One is that it desensitizes the mother to motherhood, that that, that nurturing thing that God put inside her to protect the unborn protect her babies, her little flock. See, a hen, I mean a hen. If you go near a hen's little bitties, that hen's going to fluff up and she's going to attack you. She's going to protect. We're losing that nurturing protectiveness in our women and in our men. Let's talk about the incarceration rate. 1956, 189,565 prisoners across this country. 60 years later, 2,208,000 prisoners incarcerated across this nation. Now, let's look at those, just looking at those four figures tells us a lot. It tells us that we're losing the battle. It tells us that we're going backward instead of going forward as a nation and particularly as men. And it's our responsibility as as the ones who God chose to be leaders, the ones who God chose to protect and nourish and provide and instruct, we are not doing it. We're losing the battle. Now, how is it that we went backward so fast? 60 years, how how did we go so far backward? Well, one of the answers is in our music, our television, our videos, and our radio, In these, morality has gone down the toilet. Stuff that was illegal 60 years ago on TV, radio, is legal now. Words that could not be used anywhere near public 60 years ago, everybody. You walk down the street, it's blaring from television, radio, the mouths of little children. That's a part of the problem. Patriotism is down the toilet. People don't stand up for America. Family down the toilet. Community, that sense of community that existed when I was 13 years old. If someone in our community was hurt, if a man was got hurt on a job and couldn't get to work, the rest of the men in that community got together and made sure that his family was fed, 
that his grass was cut, that the work that had to be done around his house was done. That sense of community is gone. Education, down the toilet. I looked at the stats in your Texas public school system. It is almost as bad as Louisiana's public school system. <laughs> Not quite as bad, but almost. Discipline. Down the toilet. Respect. Down the toilet. I would never let a man, when I was a boy, with a white beard, I would never let that man not go through the door first or, or, or carry something. He's carrying his, 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 his groceries. I set my groceries down and pick up his grocery bag. Said, Sir, may I, may I help you with this? He might say, no, son, thank you. I don't need any help. But it was my job. Young people now, if I'm walking to the door, I better, I better make sure I'm ready to go through that door because the young folks are going to run over me. My mama died three, four years ago. She was 104 years old. And watching my mama get ready to go through a door, I'd have to, I'd have to move and put my body there to protect her and make sure that she wouldn't get run over. Mama <clears throat> made it to 104, but my poor daddy, he left early. He, he couldn't make it past 102. <laughs> Why y'all laughing at my dad? <laughs> True. Two parents, over 100 years old. Wow. All of that violence that we expose our children to. Radio, TV, videos, music. You know, we've created a, a culture of violence. And we get surprised when the leading cause of death among young black men is other young black men killing them. We act surprised. But when you take a kid who's two years old, you sit him down in the chair, put him in front of the TV set, and give him some video games, and for, he grows up with the video games, mm -hmm. violent video games, killing games, playing, killing. By the time he's 15, 13, he's desensitized to life. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Killing is just a part of what he does, and people talk about guns, you need to take, take all the guns away. You can take the guns away today. The killing will continue tomorrow because they will use spears, bows and arrows, rocks, chairs. It is the culture of violence. It is the culture of profanity, the culture of pornography that we have permitted to take over our country. I was walking down, and not just violence, but sex also. Highly hypersexualized society. I was talking a few minutes ago about what they're teaching to, to five year old children about bath, transgender bathrooms and, and, and that whole thing when they haven't even learned how to wipe themselves in the bathroom yet. I was walking through a neighborhood a couple of weeks ago and I saw something that made me just want to stop and cry. Little girl, two and a half years old, and she's standing outside. <laughs> Mom is there, a couple of other kids, and this little girl is 
shaking her little derriere. And what she's doing is singing a song at the time. Shake your money maker. Shake your money maker. Gyrating her little body. Already understanding that there is a connection between raising herself economically and using her body. Her money maker. This is her money maker. Shake your money maker. And then we act surprised when we see that there are a million six hundred thousand illegitimate births. A million, over a million and a half. And those are just the ones that are reported. I can guarantee you it's better than two million per year. You see, that's what that little girl sees on television. She sees it in the stores. She hears it on the radio, at the beach, on television, she sees it. I'm talking about regular TV. I'm not just talking about those channels that come on late at night. I'm talking about the channels prime time, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, PM, 8 o'clock, when TV is on and the family's moving around. That's the humbug that we let her be exposed to. I got to tell you a story. It's a kind of risque story. It's a story that I have told in the front of my mother. <clears throat> And there's a reason why I want to tell you this story. <clears throat> it's a, you know, I'm from Cajun land. And uh, it's a Cajun story. So I'll, I'll tell it to you the exact way that we talk back in Cajun country in Louisiana. This story is about my cousin Clovis Fontenot. Now Clovis, he's from the mother country. Lotel, Louisiana where all the Gilleries and the Fontenot's come from. Now I know some of y'all wondered, where is Lotel, Louisiana? I brought y'all a Cajun map of the state of Louisiana so I can show you. Excuse me a minute while I get my map. <laughs> here it is. State of Louisiana, right here. You see Shreveport right there? It's Monroe right here. Lake Charles right here under my thumb. New Orleans right there. And right here in the heart of Cajun country is Lotel, Louisiana, right next to Opelousas, Louisiana. Y'all excuse me, I gotta put my map back. In Cajun country, we all have two jobs. Even the, even the map has two jobs. <laughs> So my cousin Clovis, he went to New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Oh, it was a big show there. He met this woman named Crustasia, <clears throat> what they call a, a New Orleans Creole. She talked with her hand on her hip. She moved her head like that all the time when she talked, and her hands. <laughs> now, he fell in love with Crustasia. They got married. They stayed married 30 years. On their 30th anniversary, they decided to go back to New Orleans and stay in the same hotel where they had their honeymoon. So they went there. Oh, it was romantic, you know. They, they were up, up on the top floor. The Mississippi River's down there. The moonlight on the Mississippi. They drinking a little champagne. Crustasia said, man, Clovis, tonight we're going to do the same thing we did 30 years ago, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, 
You remember what we did? First, you hugged me real tight. Oh, he stepped over there and he gave her that big, tight hug. And then you kissed me right on the mouth. He puckered up and <laughs> gave her his best kiss. And then you remember what you did. You bite me right here on the neck. He jumped up, he started running. She said, Clovis, Clovis, come back. Where you going? Where you come back here? He said, man, I'm going to the bathroom to get my teeth. <laughs> Anything worse than that, anything more sexualized than that does not belong on TV. Amen. Amen. I could tell that to my mother when she was 95 and my daughter was five years old. I could say that in front of both of them. But anything further than that does not belong on our public airways. And we own those public airways. We own radio and TV airways. We are letting people poison our children using our own airways. And it's for one reason. Because we men are not doing our job. Amen. We men are not leading. Did the Lord need to give us more time than one chapter in Genesis? <laughs> Did he need to wait till Deuteronomy or something? <laughs> we are not that slow. But we have lost our grip. We've lost our control. We've lost our place, man. We've lost it. So, how shall we turn? We all agree that we're losing the battle. Does anyone here not agree that we're losing the battle? We've all agreed we're, we're losing the battle. How do, we, how do we stop losing and turn the tide? Uh, I have a few suggestions to you, <clears throat> for you. First, we need to stop letting haters turn one brother against another brother because of race. Amen. In, in my family. I'm talking about the Guillory family around the Thanksgiving table. We have folks in my immediate family from pink-skinned, brown-haired, green-eyed to deep chocolate, brown-eyed, very curly hair. That's, that, that's my immediate family. And now, that, I mean, that was 10 years ago. Now we have an interracial family, so we are, well, that's at our, at our table. But growing up with that kind of, of family of many colors, I learned firsthand the difficulties, the pain, the sacrifices, the stereotypes that come from the colors that we are. Now that's just, that's just a black family. That's just black folk. In our community, we do battle against each other because of color, because of skin color. There's a church, you're not gonna believe this, but it's true. There's a church in my community that I showed you on that map. <laughs> they used to have two services. One for very light-skinned black people, and one for passé blanc black people. Passé blanc, that means people, black people, who are, whose characteristics, whose facial characteristics, and hair, and eyes, and skin color, they look Caucasian. They could pass, and in fact, many folks from Cajun land do move out of Cajun land, I'm talking about black folk, move out of Cajun land, move to other parts of the country. Two of my high school girlfriends uh, moved to California. And so I, I flipped the boat a couple of times and I just ride it and keep on going. But there were some holes in that boat and so it got waterlogged all inside the boat. 
So I couldn't flip it back up. It would just keep rolling and rolling. Mm -hmm. And so I followed the, the manual, the way I'd been taught. There's this, this center board sticking out of the bottom of that board. I'd hold on to the center board until someone would come and get me. And I, I held on to that for a while. The, the shore was, I mean, the, 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 the surf was pounding. It was tearing up my arms and my chest, my head. So I had to let that go. And I had to swim two miles to the shore. I learned something from that event. I learned what it felt like to be adrift on a sea in a small boat when that boat is sinking and failing you. We are, this nation, we are adrift on a sea. All of us crowded into one little boat. And if his part of that boat sinks, my part sinks along with it and we both drown. If my part of that boat sinks, his part sinks and we both drown. So we have to work together to keep that boat afloat. We have to work together right now to keep this nation afloat. Is, is, am, am I making sense to you? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Now, by holding tightly to the Lord's hands, I was able to swim two miles through that surf to the shore. Barely, barely made it. It was a harrowing experience. But thanks to the Lord's grace, I made it. All of us cannot swim to the shore. We just have to keep that boat afloat. Yeah. Now, keeping it afloat, a couple of things. As I said, stop playing racial colored cards. And I have three, three little suggestions that I'm going to sit down. <clears throat> My proposal is called the three E's. Example instruction and environment. Now the first time I told that to an audience, a man stood up and said, uh, Reverend Guillory, you only have two E's because instruction starts with I. <laughs> I said, you're right. All three of these start with I. I must set an example. I must instruct. I must create a godly environment. Three E's. Yes. <laughs> In setting an example, don't, don't say, I want you to do as I say. You got to say, I want you to do as I do. Amen. Now, fortunately, you know those, those bad statistics that I gave you earlier? Oh, I, I, I did my share to, to, to build those statistics. I confess that to you right now. The Lord has now shown me the error of my ways, and I need you to help me show America the error of those ways, because that's not working for us. So we need to be examples. We need to, to show people what a godly man looks like. The second thing that we need to do is to instruct. And it's probably, of those three things, that's probably, well, they're all three very important, but there's nothing more important than instruction. We need to instruct, particularly young people who are coming behind us in godly ways. And, and remember, children are not just our, our children. All of them are ours. We have a responsibility to all of them. So we need to go to where those children are who need some instruction and make sure that they get our values. We need to teach them instruction. Set an example and instruction. And finally, we need to create an environment, a godly environment in our country. 
Yes. We were talking a little early about videos and radios and all of that stuff. We need to stop it. Those things that were illegal 60 years ago, it didn't work when we made it legal, so let's make it illegal again. Amen. We own the airwaves. Airways. So let's take our airways back. We're not going to have smut. We're not going to have profanity. We're not going to have pornography traveling across our airways. Let's just stop it. I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to, right there where you're sitting, to make a commitment to being an example. Make a commitment to our Lord that you personally, individually, will do something to instruct our youth. That you will work with other men to create an environment that is family friendly, that is God friendly, that is prayer friendly. Our kids can't even pray. You know, we're the only folks I know of who let people come into our house. This is America, God's house, our house. We let people come into our house and stop us from praying <laughs> to our God. Try that in another country. Try it in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> take a picture of your, take a selfie first because your head is going to be on the ground <laughs> in a couple of seconds. No other nation, try it in Russia. You'll be dis you will disappear. <clears throat> we need to take our country back. Now, I'll give you one little tip. We need to have three E's chapters across this nation. Men who, who are committed to those three E's, to setting an example, to instructing, and to creating an environment. And one thing that you can do <clears throat> when you're going into somebody's school where children need instruction, don't talk about the fact that you're from a church. Just say that this is, this is the men's three E's chapter and we're here to talk about values, teach our children about values. Don't talk about the Ten Commandments. Well, don't call them the Ten Commandments. <laughs> don't say, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not. Don't, don't use those terms. They'll know that it's coming from the Bible. All you have to do is say, change the words. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal your neighbor's bling or your neighbor's wife. Uh, don't, don't use violence against someone unless it's in self-defense or to protect another person. Same message. Slightly different words. You're talking not about the Ten Commandments. You're talking about values. And you can do that in a public school without getting into difficulty. And you can do that today while we are also working on changing that climate so that prayer and godliness can be a part of the American public fabric. You can pray in public schools. You can have uh, Jesus displayed at Christmas time like it was 60 years ago. Men, we're losing the battle. Let's... Uh, Let's put our heads together. Let's put our hands together. Let's make a commitment to the Lord that we are going to do this. Can you, can you just give me two minutes? Would you just, sitting right where you are, would you just close your eyes for a second? Just whisper to the Lord. Lord, please make me an example. Make me an ambassador, Lord, for your values. Let me, Lord, represent you. Help me to teach our youth 
and to create an environment for America that is godly. Would you just please, you don't have to raise your hand, you don't have to talk to your neighbor, just for a couple of seconds, make that commitment to the Lord and to the men who are here assembled, that you will take up the leadership mantle. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brothers.